Okay, so now you remember that um, in class we looked at this squat cylinder and you know it looked a little bit like this and um, you know, just sort of like that and we'd had this magnetization that's running circularly around it right and we didn't like that because here at the center we ended up with some infinities right because you know if this is running around in a circle um, it turns out that the bound current here has to be um, infinite and it goes up as 1 over s and we weren't really happy with that so I'd like to change this a little bit so instead of having everything just run around in a circle uh, up here at here in the center um, it's I'm going to let it point straight up and the magnetization of this um, material is going to stay um, constant so the um, the magnitude is going to stay constant inside just like we did before um, but the angle is going to change so this guy is going to come up a little bit like that and then we'll have another one over here coming up a little bit like that and one below he behind here coming up a bit so so it's, so instead of having just an in-plane magnetization this thing's going to sort of twist out and point upwards um, and I think what we'd like to do is we'd like to have have it work like this so that the magnetization um, in this phi direction right at the center is zero and basically it's the entire magnetization up here at R so the magnetization looks like that and um, maybe we could also do something like this have um, the magnetization in the so if this is M phi why don't we also use MS or MZ excuse me and MZ will do this so it's sort of parabolic and if we square these and add them up they should be equal to um, just M right the magnetization of the material so so I want to look at this now and see if we can if this uh, particular setup will give us something better that we like a little bit more that looks a little more physical to us um, maybe it will maybe it won't but we don't really know unless we try right so what am I given I'm given a squat um, ferromagnetic cylinder okay um, and it, I guess that means we have to have a magnetization the magnetization has some value M uh, it has to have some radius so we'll give it a radius R and we'll give it a height H and I think probably that's all we're really going to need if we need anything else we'll um, make it up as we go along that that's part of what I'm trying to teach you in these classes right is how to take a um, sort of general description like this and turn it into mathematics and actually build something um, reasonable right that's the first thing on the syllabus um, so we also have some um, other things here to worry about it has a um, circular magnetization at the edge and vertical at the center and uh, M phi uh, increases linearly yep. at edge need the at edge it works better that way okay and what do we want to find well in this case we want to find bound currents that's what we're doing um, actually we're doing this a lot we're spending a lot of time finding bound currents um, but that's how we model the uh, magnetic material right 
So if we don't find these mound currents, we can't model the magnetic material. Uh, at least in the um, sort of way that we do it in the book. There's actually another way. Uh, and it's similar to what you did with um, polarization in the previous um, semester. <clears throat> and then we need to start our setup. Another, another thing we want to do is we want to sort of turn this into something we can do mathematics on, right? That's just a sketch. We need some axes to draw on. Right, we've got some Y's and Z's and X's. And then we want to sort of draw this um, pillbox, this squat cylinder. And, um, and that's going to have a center. Or, well, so when we draw this, right, we're drawing it at the center. The center is at the origin. And um, then the uh, rotational axis, the axis that we can rotate around and not change anything, that is the z-axis. Okay. Um, then we want. Um, the edge to go in the plus phi direction, right? And then the center is in the plus z direction. All right, so we've got all of that um, preliminary stuff done. Now we have the stuff that we would use to actually solve the problem. So we have to have a strategy, right? And as long as we have a strategy, we're going to use that strategy to actually answer um, questions about what's going on here. Um, so what do we need? We need the, these bound currents, right? Um, so we have something like KB is equal to M cross N at the edges, and we have JB is equal to del cross M. Okay, so those are our two um, ways to write the bound currents. One of these here is yeah, one of these here is um, at the edge, and one of these is inside of inside of the inside of the thing. Um, so what do we need to do? Well. To use these, we need to write the magnetization, right? I've, I've got some nice little pretty pictures. I've got some stuff that I've said, you know, about where it is and stuff like that, but I don't actually have um, the magnetization written down. So we need to write the magnetization uh, just in terms of in terms of directions and distances and stuff like that. So all we'll have to do is um, write m phi and mz in terms of the um, radial direction here, s. Uh, you'll remember s is from the center to some point here. So some point in, in the thing, so that's s. Um, so let's see. Now what I'm saying here is that this m phi in the phi direction, uh, we start at zero, and we linearly increase s, and we linearly increase in s until we get to r, um, or until we get to r, at which point we have the full magnetization in the phi hat direction. Okay, so that's one half of that, and the rest of this is we need um, to add in what's going on in the z hat direction, uh, which is going to be something along the lines of m um, times the square root of r squared minus s squared over r in the z hat direction. 
and that's true when s is less than r and the absolute value of z is less than or equal to h over 2, right? h over 2 up, h over 2 down, so that's in plane here. Um, so everything there is pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, and then outside, we have no magnetization. Magnetiza magnetization is only in the material, it's nowhere else. So we're pretty good with that. Um, now we're going to want to do something with the uh, bound currents. So now that we have this, we want to use these. Probably the first thing we want to look at is um, the bound currents in the, on the surface. And the reason why we want to look at the bound surface currents is because basically they're the easiest thing to take care of. Um, we just multiply um, m by the normal direction, right? We've got three places for that. We've got this edge here, the, the round edge, and then we have or we, the edge along the side, and then we have the two faces. And so one of these, this has a n equal s hat, n is going s hat here, here n is z hat, and here n is minus z hat. Okay, so something pretty simple to take care of. So we'll just um, go ahead and write kb, right? Um, yeah, let's do each one individually and just pretend like it's all written out nicely. So kb at the um, in in this s hat direction is equal to m s over r phi hat plus m the square root of r squared minus s squared over r in the z hat direction cross s hat right um, and uh, and now at r, at s equals r, this part goes to 0 and this goes to 1. So we just have m phi hat. So m phi hat cross s hat is um, equal to m phi hat cross s hat is minus z hat. So it's going down, right? Um, so now we look at kb for, oh, actually that's at um, s equals r, basically. And then we can do this again. We have m s over r phi hat plus m times the square root of r squared minus s squared over r in the z hat direction cross z hat. So this is on the top. Um, now we don't get to cross anything out, but z cross z is zero, right? So what we have is phi cross z, which is s. Um, so we have m s s hat over r um, at uh, z equals h over 2. And you probably could guess um, that you know, on that last surface we have um, minus m s s hat over r at, uh, what is that, z is equal to minus h over 2. And so basically we have, if this is our pillbox, we've got our currents coming out of the center here, and then down the sides. So that looks pretty cool. And then it comes back. We don't know what happens. We don't know what happens there. That's inside the volume, so we don't actually know what's going on there yet. Um, but fortunately, that's more or less what the uh, last part of this is. Is three. We need the bound volume currents. Okay. And that's going to use our happy fun time. Um, curl in cylindrical coordinates, which I'm sure you're all up on still, right? So we have uh, 
JB is equal to del cross M on the inside there. Um, so that's S hat times 1 over S uh, DM, what is that, Z over D phi. Um, that would be minus dm phi over dz. Um, next we have plus phi hat. Um, let's see, that would be dms over dz minus dmz over ds. And how much room? Oh, I've got a little bit of room, so probably I can get it all in there. So I've got finally plus z hat times 1 over s. And here's the complicated one. Um, how does this go? D, D, s, s times m uh, phi, m phi. Um, and a little bit left over. Let's see what I can get with get in there, um, minus dms d phi. All right. Now, the first thing, of course, is we only have s dependence up here, right? So anything that doesn't have any s dependence or any derivative that's not an s derivative is automatically zero, right? So we only have these two derivatives that we have to take. Uh, one's from the phi direction, so we have minus phi naught, minus phi hat, excuse me, um, dds times, uh, well, operating on um, ms over r plus z hat, 1 over s dds, um, and I guess that's, uh, oh, uh, it's phi hat dz. Okay, good. Excuse me. So we have m over r times the square root of r squared minus s squared. Okay, good, 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 good. Uh, plus z hat dds, or 1 over s dds. Um, s times um, ms, so s squared m over r, and that works out pretty well, right? I mean, we can do that pretty quickly. Um, this guy is equal to phi hat m over r. Uh, this goes, this gets one factor coming down, square root of r squared minus s squared. There's a half, but we also take multiply this, this, we also get a 2s from this, so we get a minus 2s, so the minus sign cancels. So we get a nice um, m over r s r squared minus s squared. Um, plus again z, we get 2s there, 2s m over r, I think. No. Yes, 2s m over r. So we just have m over r, right, in the z hat direction times 2. So I have that 2, and there we go. That is, um, that is the bound current density. Um, I've got less than a minute before this flakes out on me, so I'll just say that at r equals at s equals r, this thing goes to infinity, and so the bound currents screw us up again. Okay, so this is not a um, good model. Um, it's, it kind of looks nice. It has this little, has this kind of feel about it that's sort of um, sinusoidal-ish, or not sinusoidal, but sine and cosine-ish. I mean, it has a nice feel to it, but it doesn't quite get the job done. We need something a little nicer for this, or actually a little nastier for this to actually work out. Um, this looks good to me. Uh, I think this will help you for about three of your homeworks. I will see you in class.